It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Bidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Ja, na, na, na. Welcome to the Windy City's finest. I'm Brent Clark, your host. As always, we got Dan behind the camera. Dan Perryman, Perry and Clark. That's right, the two duo for sure. Uh, Chandra, why don't you come on over and introduce yourself as well too? Hi. We got a few questions for you, so why don't uh, why don't you sit down and get ready for our interrogation? Sure, I love a good interrogation. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so these these questions, we're we're just gonna ask a couple questions just to try to get to know you and a, a little bit for our viewers and a little bit for ourselves as well too. Selfishly enough. Um, so the first one that I got, what are you most proud about yourself? That's I feel like the hardest question because I feel like I'm proud of a lot of things, mm -hmm. even if they're not usually something to be proud of. I feel like anytime I do something, <laughs> anything, like it doesn't even have to be like an, a thing like this, like yeah. this is something I'm proud of, or like even just like dancing for myself in my kitchen. Yeah, I feel like it's something like getting myself up and doing something. I'm, I'm always proud of myself yeah. for that. Yeah, it's not all about the big victories. It's it's no. about some of the small ones as well, too. I yeah. celebrate any time that I sweep my floors. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Any kind of cleaning whatsoever in my house, I, I do a dance party for myself. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that this was the first question and that it was probably going to be the most difficult. I got yeah. a lot more coming yeah. as well, too. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you kind of mentioned there's lots of things to uh, be proud about, but... Uh, despite some not being seen as something to be proud about. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering to delve into that a little bit more. Like, were, are there any examples that you have that uh, are like moments that you've been proud, but maybe other people wouldn't see it as a prideful thing? Yeah. Um, I think, I think just showing up whenever I can, like yeah. showing up to anything is just, it's such a feat. I feel yeah. like sometimes like getting yourself to, go out and do something with friends even is like a huge feat for yeah. me. So it's, yeah, even just going out, hanging out with friends, going for some patio drinks or going to a concert or just getting Just out. diving in, just yeah. doing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doing yeah. something, going for walks, going, you know, playing with my dogs. Yeah. It's every, I'm just proud. Yeah. All of those kinds of things. Yeah. Just, I, I do admit people like who always jump into things. One thing that I've never been able to do is karaoke. Karaoke always just freaks me out too much. I but. would love so bad to do karaoke and like get up on stage <laughs> and sing. And I just can't. Yeah, I know. Right. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many, um, drinks of water I have. No, no. <laughs> it's, uh, it, 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 it just doesn't come around. No. But, and yeah. I can, I will belt things in my car, like by myself. I'm the person like you'll pull up beside me and I'll be jamming in my car. Yeah. And I can do it then, but I just can't do it in front of people. And I love bad singing. Bad singing is incredible. Yes, it is. It's and I love the satirical humor that comes with it as well yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. This is going great so far. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's lovely. I love I love the uh, celebrating like the small things. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I feel like I should probably actually celebrate those things more often. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I like actually, actually take a moment to be like, that was sick. Do yeah. it again. What I was thinking is that I've actually listened to a few podcasts that tell you to, anytime that you're trying to build a new habit, mm -hmm. do a small celebration. Anytime you do like, if it's like push-ups, like you, you want to try to work out more. Yeah. Anytime you do a push-up do like a little celebration dance or something like that. Yeah. Like just could be a two second like motion, but just mm -hmm. have that motion mm -hmm. so that you kind of encourage good feelings anytime that that happens. Yeah, like train your brain to feel good about it. I feel like sometimes yeah. like that actual like celebrating yourself kind of takes a lot of work and it's like, why would I do that? Yeah, it's right. work, I have things to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, yeah. I, yeah, I totally get that. I totally get that. I'm just imagining now like, <laughs> what would what would be, what would be your happy move? All the things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I move all the time and I don't know what it would be. Some kind of a wiggle. I feel I feel like uh, kind of like something like that. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> People didn't see that, but <laughs> something like something like that. Very low, like <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 
I did, I've done the, uh, I'm not going to get up for this, but uh, uh, I've done the. Oh my gosh, incredible. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. that. That I think that's that's going to be my happy move. Yeah, that, that, brings, <laughs> that brings up good feelings when yeah, you do it. <laughs> exactly. Greatest accomplishment. Do you have one of those? Greatest that... accomplishment. I always have to say finishing college, like graduating. Yeah. That's a tough one. That's yeah. so hard. A lot Especially of when you're still a child, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, I graduated when I was college when I was 19. Yeah. I finished high school when I was 17. I was still a baby. I don't know why they do that to people. College is nuts, but I'm... And so essential, I argue, as well, too. Like, yes. you're truly not done school once you finish high school anymore. No, yeah. That's maybe true. Maybe in the days before, but nowadays, certainly not. Like, I know. Yeah. No, yeah. I totally agree with that. So what did what did you take in college? Um, I went to school to be a legal assistant. A legal assistant? Yeah. Oh, my. So I worked in a law firm. Yeah. Very. That's awesome. Yeah. I just started watching um, Suits as well, too. <laughs> so I've been like, oh, legal jargon and all that stuff, <laughs> yeah. too. That's fantastic. Yeah. It always <laughs> makes me laugh when people bring up Suits because I'm like, it's not like that. <laughs> I know. I know it's absolutely not like mm -hmm. that, but I just, I love the characters. I know. <laughs> and I do love to think of it like that. When, yeah. a suit, like, when anything happens, I just think of, like, if we were being filmed in yeah. those Suits and I'm like, this could be funny. This could be a good time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Legal assistant. Like Legal what got assistant. you into that degree as well too? Um, I just, I tried to pick something that I was, that aligned with the subjects that I was good at. Mm -hmm. I always knew I was going to do something like art wise, but not for a job. I really never wanted to do that. It, I, I know I get really sick of things that I do often yeah. and I never wanted to get sick of art. So I just wanted something that was really like, I mean, I'm good with words. I feel I try to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so just like, yeah, figuring out the right way to say things and stuff. Yeah. Not math, not science. No. And uh, that led to legal assisting, apparently. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, obviously focusing on what you're already strong at as well, right? Yeah, That's exactly. a big advantage. Yeah. I, I'm kind of interested. You mentioned that uh, you always knew that art was always going to be a part of your life as well, mm -hmm. too even when you delved into uh, college there. I'm kind of wondering, where, where did your artistic story begin? You know, I, that's interesting. I would love to know. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I, fe I think of this a lot. Like, when did it actually start? And I know my family has always been, like, slightly artistic, yeah. I suppose. Like, they're, they were always into music and stuff. Mm -hmm. um my mom was and her family is a real they're all really good artists drawers but that was definitely not my medium I knew that right um so I guess it was just everywhere and it was like the one thing that made sense to me like yeah. without even like having to try to to conceptualize what it is I think it just always made sense inherently mm -hmm. so I was like that that's my thing I don't know what it is or how it is going to work right now, but that's what I love and that's what I'm going to do. And you've just been doing it ever since mm -hmm. as well too, right? Yeah. What purpose do you get out of that as well too? Funnily enough, it sort of gets me out of my head because mm -hmm. I, I feel like when you dance, it's all internalized. I mean, and, and maybe that's it. Maybe it gets me out of my head and into my body more. I'm yeah. a very airy person and I'm kind of like an overthinker and I I'm just constantly thinking about things mm -hmm. like my brain doesn't stop ever. Yeah. So I think maybe that's probably what it is, is it, it gets me out of my head and into my body and focusing on something like, I guess the bigger picture of like life. It's really grounding. Yeah. Yeah. I really feel that there. I've, I've had a few moments. I like for, for actors like myself, mm -hmm. um, we, we presence. That's when you really know you're in your body and you're no longer thinking in your head anymore and you're able to just kind of do the riff. You're able to do the scene yeah. and just and just really feel it. I've had similar feelings as well, too, when I when I played soccer. I'm just like in the game zone yeah. or I'm playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like having something else to really hone in on and focus on, like yeah. makes you, allows you to let go of everything else. It's yeah. so weird. It's like you like connect to one thing super intensely, but it is really freeing and it, it allows a, you to let go. It's almost like I, I can to it, like, and this might just be me, but like to lucid dreaming sometimes where yeah. it's just kind of like I, because I'm even able to acknowledge, yeah, I definitely feel I'm on my A game right now. And mm -hmm. and then I can just continue doing it. 
without yeah. getting in my head about that. Mm -hmm. And um, you just do it for the sake of doing it. Right? Yeah. No, no yeah. purpose. No, that's awesome. Yeah. What is one thing that you want people to know about you? You know what? I don't want people to know about anything about me. <laughs> like I like to be the person who like shocks people all the yeah. time. Not that that's a conscious thought. I'm not like, yeah. let's go around and shock people. Yeah. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I just like naturally don't ever like people knowing anything about me. I like to tell people the really weird things about me, like mm -hmm. the stomach hair that I grow that's like six inches long. That's really important to me. <laughs> that's who I am. I grow is a very actual... large stomach hair. <laughs> yeah. Is that an actual thing? <laughs> that's, or... a, that's a real thing. What? Yeah, I know. I don't think it's, I, I always break it off, but it's like, yeah, it always grows back though. That's insane. I know, it's kind of incredible. That is. That is legitimately, wow, that's crazy. Something people should know. And now, now people know. Incredible, <laughs> one single stomach hair, incredible length. That's amazing. I, we, we have so many potential for studies with that. Um, <laughs> okay, okay, I'll try not to get too distracted on that. Took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Another question that we have as well too, um, so what do you need more in your life? I mean, I always need more adventure. Adventure. What yeah. do you mean by that? I don't know. I just more frolicking in the fields and doing things for no reason. I really love that. Man, I vibe with that. <laughs> I know. I need to. I know. And I it's, I think about it all the time, too. I yeah. just want to go frolic. And it doesn't even have to be a nice looking field. Yeah. Like it could be like in the dead of winter. They, it looks like sticks. Yeah. A bunch of sticks. I just want to touch the grass and breathe in and my sinuses get clogged up because of allergy season yeah. being here. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be that. Yeah. <laughs> just being. Yeah. Just being somewhere. I like that. I like that. So on the flip side in that case, what do you need less of in your life? Mm, probably overthinking. Overthinking? Yeah. Yeah. Overthinking everything. Is, is that is that more of akin to you that's maybe served you in uh, uh, your legal assistant uh, yes. career path? Yeah. yeah, it definitely helps. Yeah. It definitely has its upsides, but sometimes I just want to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just like, especially when like you've thought about something enough and you like feel like you grasp it, but then my mind's like, let's just go over everything that we just thought about, about this one small thing and like re- revamp that and make sure yeah. that we thought about it correctly yeah. so yeah definitely less of that i yeah. don't need any more well it, it's good to know that you've seen the advantages to that as well too because yeah. a lot of people are just like ah overthinking is always a disadvantage i'm like yeah no as a big overthinker myself yeah. it, it really helps like you just need to find a spot or like like for example my career path has taken mm -hmm. me to points where it's like i'm dealing with like 16 different things at once yeah but that is happy for me because yeah. I'd much rather deal with 16 things than one long, arduous task. Yes. Which is yeah. not my thing. But. Yeah. And it kind of like makes you, it makes me really excel in my job, I feel yeah. like, because I can do, like, it, there's a lot going on in, in, as a legal assistant. And I feel like it definitely helps that, but it doesn't always have to be around. Like, it could go kick rocks at some point and yeah. just like let me be. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, that being said, it's always good to have kind of your slow moments too. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Um, so another thing that I kind of want to know, uh, about yourself or what are three things that you are most grateful for? I am great. I'm, I feel like I'm so grateful for a lot of things all the time, like even throughout the day, but to pick three things, I mean, I'm always grateful for my dogs. I love my dogs. Yes. They're incredible. Absolutely. Best friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, Really love my wife. She's a great person. Great to have around. Lovely. Yeah. Puts up with my shenanigans. Yeah. What are your dog's names? Their names are Opie and Parker. Opie and Parker? Yes. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. They're a greyhound and a chihuahua, which is really, it gets... <laughs> that is such a dichotomy right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They love each other, but they hate each other. Um, yeah. I love those guys. They're crazy. They are nuts. They're Are insane they? dogs. Like Opie of the Greyhound never stops talking. I like to say he's yeah. talking. Um, and the Chihuahua's just like, anything goes, whatever you say, I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and sorry to, to, to pull you off course as well, too. The yeah. third thing that you're most grateful for. The third thing that I'm most grateful for. 
It's almost how do you narrow one. it down? I know. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like because everything else that you're not grateful for is going to be so offended. By it's going to feel very <laughs> ungrated for. <laughs> I mean, I'm really grateful for air conditioning right now. Me too. I bought it last year and I went through a lot of years without it. And yeah, I love people inventing things. Thank you to whoever invented air conditioning. Um, I can imagine being a legal assistant mm -hmm. can be very tough uh, yeah. sometimes. And even, even if you're doing a performance and you can find yourself getting in, caught in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, my question for you is when things get tough, how do you cope? I I feel like I'm a non-coper. A non-coper? <laughs> yeah, if that could be a word for something. The like, secret is you don't. <laughs> you don't, yeah. Like I just kind of sit there and I'm like, well, that's not great. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I don't know. I just, I feel like I just like, I, I don't care. I care too much. Yeah. But that also just pushes me over the edge into not caring. Yeah. A lot of times I feel like. Yeah. Because I do care about so so much like every single little thing yeah. that like I, I do think that's my coping mechanism maybe you could call it like shutting down and that's not very good mm -hmm. but I like to think of it as just like whatever yeah. say la vie yeah exactly yeah you just burn out and, mm -hmm. and you let that fizzle and all that stuff too and then you get back the next week and you yeah knock the day out ramp it up again yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wish i could like know what goes on i just feel like my mind does it for me and i'm just like thank yeah. you it's nice yeah well you seem very multidisciplinary as well too i'm, I'm kind of yeah. curious as well like who was in in your words who would be uh one of your early positive influences in your life that kind of led you along this path yeah i feel like i i got into music really early on um, and kind of just like look to those people more than the people that I had around me. I don't know if I just kind of saw them living their life and I just thought, well, yeah, they're, they're doing that. That's pretty cool. They should be, mm -hmm. or I don't really know what that is, but I kind of just looked very externally when I was a kid for people that did things for me, you know, that were like inspirational and stuff. And just the yeah, other people that made music that I was listening to, anybody who I guess did any kind of art and then lived a life after yeah like lived a normal life and also yeah. did art on the side I feel like that was always something that was really really cool yeah yeah I no know. it's really important to kind of see those those influential figures that are able to mm -hmm. live their lives yeah. while still doing this really cool thing that everybody really enjoys yeah yeah no totally agree with that so are you uh, like native born here in Lethbridge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent, born and raised. excellent. How, yeah. do, how does how does that feel? Still being here in Lethbridge as well too. How, how was it like growing up here? I loved it. Yeah, I feel like Lethbridge gets a bad rep a lot of times, and I loved it. Like you just like every time somebody says they don't like this city, I'm just like, well, you're not hanging around the right people. You're not yeah. in the right circles. You're not in the right environment because yeah. It, Ever since I was a kid, like there's been incredible sh like shows coming here, mm -hmm. whether it's like musical theater shows or concerts, mm -hmm. like we always had huge acts coming to Lethbridge for no reason. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, it was always a city that was built around art and it just started coming t out, mm -hmm. I feel like in recent years or kind of in the past like decade or so, I would say. Yeah. And it, yeah, I feel like there's really incredible, I feel like a lot of really cool people are born from like Lethbridge, I guess has been mostly like a kind of like, I don't know, maybe conservative-ish town, I like to say. Yeah. And there's really cool people who are born into that kind of circle yeah. and, and find their own within like a, this space that yeah. is Lethbridge and and yeah, people leaving and coming back. And I feel like it is just like, it's, it makes us really diverse here. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think people realize that. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I've always, I've always said as well too, that, uh, Lethbridge is small, uh, like small town, big city energy mm -hmm. type thing as well too. Yeah. You know, it's got something here, right? So, yeah, for sure. And yeah. I feel like the bigger you get, the more like lost or diluted those like important things get like, just like the small community, like feeling connected yeah. to somebody just because they're yeah. from here and stuff. Like 
I love having that. And it's a way smaller world than you might think as well, too. Have yeah. you run into anybody uh, that is kind of a definition to that? I mean, I don't, kind of everybody, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of everybody that it, they're somehow connected to something that I do or have something I've done or somewhere I've been. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know. So we kind of mentioned, touched on a little bit of where you grew up as well, too. Um, so about your family, uh, who would you say you're most like in your family? You know, I read this question and I have to really <laughs> think about it because I'm like, I feel like my fa my whole family is a bunch of very like individualistic people. So mm -hmm. I feel like none of us are really alike, but we're all kind of really, I mean, I guess I would have to say my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're just like, I feel like since we were born, we just like every, I'm, I have a really weird like thought process mm -hmm. and weird sense of humor and like I feel like everything that I say doesn't normally make sense to other people but she always understands it hmm. and I always understand her like we are just a bunch of weirdos us too and I yeah what do you mean by that I mean we're just like I feel like we find the the weirdest things funny that shouldn't be funny and it's not even I, I don't know I just so it's hard to explain because I feel like we just like we're like those people that just like we do anything and we there's something hilarious that comes from it mm -hmm. or there's something like really like to be like we learn we love learning and so like ev and we find that in everything and people could just do whatever we're doing or I feel I find every time an external person is with us they never understand what we're doing or saying yeah 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 that's very like, uh always entertaining yes. yeah always entertaining. <laughs> Well, well, looking back on your life as well, too, is there a specific memory that just makes you light up? Yeah, I mean, if we were to go back to my childhood, any of the time spent with my sister, probably. Yeah. Yeah, if we would like, we were like the kids that were born into the backyard and you never left until it was dinner time. So we would come up with some pretty crazy games and, and uh, just like really use our imagination all of those times, just like finding something out of nothing is always like always something that sparks it was kind of like my brother and i we used to play like imaginary games or something mm -hmm. and we it would honestly just be like an impromptu scene creation yeah always where you're just you're playing pretend the entire time yeah like we had this one game that we would call brothers and we would just pretend that we were brothers instead of sisters <laughs> like for no reason we didn't have like any plot line or anything it was just like that you got backwards hats you stole the neighbor's skateboards yeah, yeah. all that stuff too <laughs> yeah my name was jamie i think or yeah. something like that i can't <laughs> yeah. remember <laughs> yeah. that's awesome <laughs> what makes your life feel purposeful doing something yeah and like I think ideally with other people because I'm probably like a pretty um, like solitary person. And yeah, like, I introverted really, all that. Yeah, I love yeah. spending time with myself. I think I'm a pretty interesting person. So that's I agree really so fun. far. Yeah, that's well, great. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that that could be a lie, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but so yeah, just doing anything, yeah, with other people, I always find gives my life purpose mm -hmm. stuff like this sharing just, experiences yeah, right yeah yeah that's actually that's my answer yeah sharing, sharing experiences. experiences makes life purposeful yeah right on that's wholesome yeah. as hell i love that you just gave me my answer that was incredible. yeah <laughs> hey that's what i'm here for <laughs> so what values are most important to you you know like just being a good person Excellent. You, you don't have to like say or do right things all the time, but just like having the intention of being yeah. good to people. I think I really value that. I guess if you were to kind of like chop it up into like sections, you could, and there's a lot of values within that. Like, um, I don't know, just being responsible for your own actions and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I, it is just like an all encompassing kind of mm -hmm thing though that I, the idea of something that I value in somebody else better be encompassing otherwise I'm just like dictating how other people get to live yeah yeah <laughs> don't want to do that <laughs> if you had one wish that could come true what would it be I wish that I would want everybody to be kinder to animals 
I think they're more important than humans realize, and you should be kinder to them. To who, sorry? To the animals. To the animals? Yeah. Like the bees and the turtles and yeah. the lemmings as well, too. I find everybody craps also on those. lemmings, but yeah, they're kind of cute. Those. I just learned recently that turtles are their shells and they don't live inside them. So that that really threw me for a loop. You should be really kind to them because they their spine, I think, goes through the upper part of the shell. And then they have like their rib cage and they're all connect. It's connected. So they are, yeah. Wait. It's really that, creepy if you Google. Oh, that makes so much sense, though. Mm, if you Google what a turtle, like a turtle skeleton. Otherwise, they'd be like hermit crabs. Yeah. I mean, I really did. I don't know what I thought, but apparently I thought they lived like hermit crabs, and they are their shells. So. Oh, man. That's, that hurts my head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even. Oh, man. They're the most muscled, like, rock-hard abs ever. Anyways, sorry. I'm getting yeah. a little off topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go? I mean, I've always said this and traveling's weird after COVID, I feel like. So not, I got to like re kind of immerse myself into the world of traveling yeah. again, but I've always said Sweden. I feel like that's oh. a really interesting, cool place. Yeah. What, what, what brings you to Sweden? Um, to be honest, I watched the girl with the dragon tattoo one time and that was, that's a very good reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Also, I feel like Sweden produces a lot of really cool films. Like, I never actually paid attention to where no. some of their films might be produced there, I guess. The Girl yeah. with the Dragon Tattoo, obviously. Like, yeah, so there's there a Swedish more? version and an American version. Oh. Yeah, I really liked the actual Swedish version. It okay. was very really good. I feel like, I don't know, there's something about that place that's like born into like an, an, an imagination I feel like it's just like this place that just like lives off of the Themselves. thought of imagination and yeah. just like pretty things. I don't know. Yeah. And just like the way that they do everything, like walking down a street, doing something really lame there, I feel like could be, it just is so beautiful. Yeah. And they make a lot of art there. I'm always drawn to places that are good. They definitely that. support their artists for their, for they sure. do. Yeah, yeah. They're incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. If you could meet anyone in the world, alive or dead, who would it be? I feel like I would probably still, I've met Tegan and Sarah, but I would love to meet them and like sit down with them and talk to them. And talk to them just like this, eh? Yeah. And yeah. have like an actual conversation about what it is like to live, you know, the crazy life that they do. <laughs> They're like a, they're, they don't even live that crazy of a life compared to other people, but just yeah. like, they grew up in Southern Alberta and were born in Calgary and stuff. And I feel like that, that leads a person in a certain direction and the, the way that they got, were allowed to still remain so creative and got a lot of, you know, attraction, I suppose, for their music and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, always interesting. But me. not that they were looking for it. It was just, that's what brought Never them joy. Never looking for it. Yeah. yeah. And it just happened. And yeah. I want to get inside somebody's mind like that. That's yeah. Just like, yeah. What brings you joy? Mm, so many things. That's a good answer. <laughs> I know. But I mean, it is. It's so That's a healthy true. answer, yeah. I should say. <laughs> what brings me? I just, I mean, I guess just doing things outside. Yeah. Is like the outdoors are gross. It's dirty bugs are a lot mosquitoes are annoying yeah but i feel like anytime i do anything outside i'm just like instantly happy or yeah and like it does go beyond like the happiness level just like forms right into joy instantly i feel like yeah. joy is like one of the highest vibrational mm -hmm. feelings i hear and uh, or emotional states and i feel like that's like instant somehow yeah when you go outside anything outside yeah because i i I definitely agree with what, what you mentioned just there with it being the most heightened sense because yeah. I always find it catches you by surprise. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because, well, you don't realize you're feeling it until you already are or have felt it. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, that was really intense. <laughs> I feel like joy is like a pretty calm emotion when it's happening, but after you've done whatever you've done and felt joy, you're like, that was intense. Yeah. 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 That's nutty. <laughs> um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? The, 
best piece of advice I've ever been given. I really recently, um, I feel like this person has said this all the time, one of my dance teachers, but recently it's really like made sense to me. I've gone through kind of a lot of injuries and ups and downs with my body and stuff mm -hmm. for, due to old age and dancing for so long. Yeah. Um, I, she said something like, and I, I can't say it in like as eloquent of terms as she probably would. She's very well-spoken, but mm. she said something like sh along the lines of just showing up is important um, however you can, if you only have 70% working capacity in your shoulders or your hips or your knees, you show up and you do the job at 70% and that 70% is a hundred percent of your body's ability. Yeah. So do you don't have to be perfect and injury is not gonna hold you back from you giving or providing what you were already there to do yeah so showing up however you can and that and not letting that like stop you that thought process of i'm not ready i'm not prepared you know i'm not you gonna give up yeah you still have gonna... whatever you're going to, you were going to give inside of you and you're yeah. still going to be able to give it just it's going to look different yeah i'm not going to give up i'm going to give what i can yeah type thing yeah yeah no that's that's lovely advice yeah i love that yeah, no, that's awesome. So kind of speaking on advice, now we have you here for dancing as well too, um, that we'll be featuring here. Um, what's the best advice that you can give to a beginning dancer? And just ignore me if I'm writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it sort of depends on what they're, they're going into, like what their goal is with dance, right? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you want to be just like a competitive, like top tier, like, um like skilled dancer just for like your technique and stuff i don't think i have good advice for that because hmm. i feel like i didn't i started late and i definitely like i put the work in and i feel like i got decent but yeah. i'm not like i i never that was never my intention or my goal it just felt really good so i would say like if I were to tell somebody starting out who just wanted to dance, just to dance, I would say do it all the time. Yeah. Like and just any, practice, practice, yeah. practice. Do it in different spaces. Like put yourself in a spot that's maybe a little bit uncomfortable, not necessarily mm -hmm. a dance studio, like in your living room or your kitchen or outside and switch up your space. Your space. I feel like it changes the way that you move and you think about things. And that's... Mm -hmm always really interesting it pulls a lot out of you that you might not expect and just do it all the time any hmm. chance you get yeah yeah oh that's awesome yeah um and i guess for dance in particular what what do you feel like it holds relevance here in the community i i just i love kind of i guess i don't know if this maybe is a fact or not but i feel like dance is often maybe overlooked as like an art form because mm -hmm. people see it in the studio and they see like ballet dancers like the Alberta Ballet or like I think that's like their main idea of dance and to see it as like to see it go beyond the technique and into something that's affecting other people and I think dance always affects people it always yeah. is super emotional and just um I think it always does that to people, but just doing it for like art's sake and not being very good. Like I really love it when people who don't think they can dance, like kind of take a class or like move their bodies in any way. It's really beautiful. Like, I feel like they come up with the best, like I get so much inspiration from those people because they just think, they don't think of dance as like a, you have to be perfect posture, this and that, like rules, there's so many rules to dance. Yeah, I, I love I love breaking through that and dance as an art is just the coolest in that way mm -hmm. that it it was set up to have so many boundaries, but it actually is limitless and there's there are no boundaries when you form it into art. Well, geez, I didn't need to write down any of that at all. If it if it turns <laughs> out me as a beginner, I'm going to be teaching the teacher. Incredible. I, I know. Yeah, I can't wait. Honestly, I. I think pretty jazzed to to probably just dive right into it. So yeah. I think if you're all right, we can we can end the interrogation for now yeah. and uh, and just get up and get ready to do this stuff as yeah. well too.
It's Clark and Perry on the case. Da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Da -na -na -na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Vidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Da -na -na -na.